Welcome to Chamber Chat. I am one of your hosts, Courtney Galley, the Director of Special Events for the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Brian Bondi, President of the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. Each month, guests are brought on to talk about what is happening in the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. We get the inside scoop of our members, what they do, and what has made their company successful. We also chat about our upcoming events and programs the Chamber is hosting. The Chamber is a nonprofit 501c6 organization and is designated as a three-star accredited chamber by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The mission of the Chamber is to strengthen the economic environment and quality of life in Montgomery County. The Chamber is made up of more than 1,100 members and provides members with monthly networking events, educational seminars, cost-effective marketing opportunities, and much more. I hope you have a cup of coffee because we have a great lineup this morning. I have my cup of coffee here. You do. I can't do black, so. R- really? No, it's too bitter. Oh. I have to have it sweet. Okay. I re- you know, I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> you used to have you used to do it back then, so, back in the day. True story. I started drinking coffee. Yeah. And I put a ton of milk in it. Yeah. And about four tablespoons of sugar. Yeah. I'm not that bad. Well, it, it was. It was like, <laughs> it was really bitter. So, as time wore on, I, I went to college. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I don't need that cream. Yeah. So, I quit putting cream in it. But I still yeah. put sugar in it. Yeah. Because coffee at Stephen F. Austin was really bad, <laughs> and then finally, about senior year, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm I'm going I'm I'm going for the full Monty. I, yeah, I took took everything out, and I've been drinking oh, wow. it black ever since. Yeah, no, I mm, mm, no, I can't. <laughs> but I have such a sweet tooth anyway, so yeah. I mean, I don't have to have much. Like I have to have a little bit of creamer or milk, and then maybe like two sweet and lows, but. So yeah. do you do like the mocha chocolate? Yeah, I spend yeah, like twelve dollars yeah. at Starbucks sometimes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah. A, that says a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a Starbucks, <laughs> Starbucksy kind of person, but I did have my diet coke on the way here, so. Ah, gotcha. <clears throat> that's my. That's usually my coffee. So. That's right. Every time I see you in the morning, you're opening up a diet coke. Yeah, that's my. So that it. Okay. Yeah. That works. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to see me without it sometimes. So. I, very good point. <laughs> you're like, you don't want to see me without coffee. You don't want to see me without the diet coke. So, you need to answer a question for me. Okay. What happened to January? It's gone. <laughs> it's like we blinked our eyes and yeah. it disappeared. I know. It's crazy. I mean, we had probably five or six big things. Yeah, we had a lot in January. And weather. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, elected officials, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And then we did uh, Kevin Brady breakfast. Yep. Luncheon with the sheriff. Yep. Chairman's gala. Yep. And job fair. Yep. Plus morning mingle. Yes. Plus an after hours at yes. Mr. Reuter. Oh my gosh, I'm already tired. That's again. seven things. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was great. It was. It was a lot of fun. It was great. We had a, we had a lot of good events. That yeah. must be why it went by so fast because we yeah we were doing I think something. So it was a busy month, but it was a great month. So yeah. So I don't know if you've heard the feedback on the gala. A little bit, but not too much. Oh, I've gotten a ton of feedback. Oh, good. Absolutely. Uh, well, not, I hope it's good. Not. <laughs> and now, for the first time, <laughs> I'm like, oh, great feedback. Well, maybe I don't want it. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. No. <laughs> Unbelievable positive feedback. Good. I mean, heartwarming type stuff. Good. As in, I'm glad. we've been to a lot of these, and we've never had it this much fun. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. If you didn't go, it was baseball themed, Field of Dreams. Yes. It's pretty fun. That was the only criticism I heard. Yeah, um, I heard that too. Like, people were upset because they didn't know that they came dressed in the theme. I was like, well, you could have come dressed in the theme. Yeah. Like, I mean, but I don't want to enforce, like, a theme on people either. So that's why we said black tie optional, baseball attire encouraged. So, yeah. I think the ladies had the biggest issue with yeah. the baseball theme because it's really tough to put a, a, an outfit together with baseball. Well, they should have called us or seen our <laughs> Pinterest page because it, it was right. actually pretty simple because we were telling a lot of people just wear a dress with Converse tennis shoes. And we had a couple of people who did yes, that. Yes, we did. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. My wife was wearing Converse yeah, shoes and right. I saw about four or five others. Yeah, yeah. So. They were the smart ones. Right. Their feet were comfortable. Exactly. See, we're trying to help the comfort. But, see? yeah. So... You know, I mean, themed stuff is, is is a little hard, but, you know, I mean, again, I don't want to force a theme down somebody's throat either. No, I agree with but, that. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, I loved it. I wore pants the first time. It's nice. Didn't have to wear a dress. I wear pants every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, I 
I, I like doing something that's themed, so it makes it more fun. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, good. good I'm time. glad. Yeah, I'm glad. lots of lots of positive yeah. feedback. So yeah, on to next year. Yes, <laughs> check another one off the list. <laughs> have some ideas for mr wagner already so we'll see oh well listen that's gonna be a lot of fun yeah definitely yep so so what's yeah. what, what's on our agenda for today courtney well <clears throat> you know even though january was pretty busy uh february is too um so um we have our candidate forum as we speak yes so we're excited about that we did a couple back in 2016 so um, this candidate forum is going to be um, with state and county officials Wonderful. Uh, that are running for a certain amount of races. So um, at the Lone Star Convention Center, um, if you're not here, then um, if you're not at the candidate forum, then you're listening to us right now. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you get two Maybe for the both. price of one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're really excited to be able to do that again. Um, we'll be doing one in March for the city officials for city council uh, positions. You know, it, it, it is an election year, and yep. it's it's an unfortunate that so much of the press is negative towards elected officials. Right. They, these folks, I tell you what, they they work hard. Yep. And, you know, we don't always agree with everything right. that they do, but, my gosh, it, be informed. Uh, yep. Attend a forum. Read up on right. what these candidates stand for, because right. I'll be honest with you, the local government, the city, county, right state i mean yeah that's going to have more impact on your day-to-day yeah. -day living than any other right entity yeah so pay attention yeah and we're glad to be able to do that um i wish we could do do a, a candidate forum for every race that's out there but um you know um but i think we're doing really good ones we'll have um, county treasurer and a district clerk and then we'll have some state representatives um we'll have the commissioners so um really very local localized um, yep races that are going to be done so um yeah and, and we encourage everybody to get out and vote as well too i think early voting starts on the 20th so the last day to register to vote was the 5th so if you if you didn't register you're not going to be able to vote right. but great point yeah but get out there and vote early you know what they say and vote. often yeah vote, vote <laughs> early and often or just vote you know i mean we do we encourage everybody to you know be informed but also get out there and and, uh, and vote it's uh it's an amazing privilege and right, and exactly. you need to exercise it every yeah. chance you get. So, you know, that brings up a point. Like, my, my parents always encouraged me to do it. Like, I remember turning 18 and going, oh, my God, I can vote, you know. And I don't know if that's been trickling down to the younger generation or not, but my, my mother still calls me and asks me if I vote. Did you vote? I'm like, yes, Mom, I did, you know. But, I, you know, I don't know if that's – I'll have to get on to my goddaughters who now can vote, mm -hmm. which is kind that's of right. – a little disheartening, but I have two that are 18 and 19, so yeah. um, make sure that they do it every year. So so I'm actually a uh, first-generation American. My parents yeah. uh, were Canadians, and yeah. so as soon as I turned 18, I started yeah. voting right away. Right. And it wasn't until after my dad passed away in 2001 that my mom went through and became a U.S. citizen. Oh, awesome. And yeah. voted in her first election in 2004, I believe. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, I mean, I think we just take for granted we that, do. that we have that privilege. And and she could, every election since then, she's voted. And Oh, that's you know, great. And how many people skip election right. after election because my vote doesn't count? Every, every single vote, vote yeah, counts. Yeah, definitely. And don't say, well, I don't have time to vote. You have, like, two weeks. Oh. You have weeks before the election. It's so, gotten so much easier. Yeah, definitely. Especially in, like, in Montgomery County, we have the electronic thing. I mean, it t I mean, you just do a little swirl <laughs> thing, you're, you're done. <laughs> I mean, it's the best thing in the world. I love it. So. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Dick, yeah. this is really good coffee from Conroe Coffee Company. Thanks for uh, sharing that with us today. It really makes a difference. Every morning. Okay. Yay. Well, awesome. I tell you what, it's got a great flavor, so it helps me kind of get the day going. <laughs> As Dick Sips is, too. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, yeah, I digress. Yeah, so we have the candidate forum coming up, and then um, in a couple of weeks we have the Go Texan Parade. Oh, my God, I love it. Yes. It's, it's a great time. Uh, last year was my first one. It was, yes. Uh, and I had more fun than you can yes. take a stick at. I can't wait yeah. for it. Now, it's going to be on Saturday. The 17th. 17th of yes. February. So, Ooh. I know last year it was a week later because Houston was um, – um, Supporting the Super Bowl. Oh, that's right. And so then that delayed the livestock show and radio. But it's yep. back on the regular uh, weekend on the 17th. Good deal. And this year's theme is backing scholars with rodeo dollars. That sounds good. Yeah. So, I mean, if you 
have a business or an organization in the area, you need to participate. This is a great way to expose your company or, or business and, and organization to the area. I mean, the the it's hard to say. Like people are saying, so how many people come? The parade route is so long; it's just hard to kind of gauge sometimes. But there's tons of people out there. Yeah, there really. I thought there was probably what easily five, ten thousand people. Oh yeah, for sure. There had to have been. Yeah, for sure. So definitely come out and do that. If you are a nonprofit, there's no cost. That, that makes it even easier. I mean, come on. And if um, you're commercial, it's only fifty dollars. If you're a political, um, that you are actually currently running for office, it's a hundred. But if you're already in office, there's no charge. <laughs> and, and all of this money, yeah. Think all about of, that yeah, one for exactly. a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all of this money goes to um, you know support the um, Houston Life Start Showing Rodeo Scholarship. So. I mean, that's, you're, that's you're putting, well yeah, you're putting money into something that's a great organization. And um, there's different ways you can um, participate in the parade. You can have a judge float. And so what they do is um, you um, decorate your float um, with the theme. Right. And then they award, award prizes. Yes. That's a great way. If you don't want to do that and you just want to have a float, you can do that. You can march. You can walk. You can ride horses. You can have a car or truck or however you want to do it. But it is. It's a great way to, um, to especially, I think, like, I've been encouraging some of our new members to do it mm -hmm. um, because that's a great way to get out there and uh, let people know about your business. So. Well, I remember from last year, uh, we had Larry the Lobster with us. We did. And he people, was waving at everybody. He was. We always take Larry with us. A lot of people sometimes think he's a crab. He's a crab. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, we, yeah, the, actually, you know, the staff gets and we invite our um our board to come with us and yes. we're in the parade and it's fun to go out there and see people in the community. Even the mayor rode with us last yes, year. He so did. we're going to need to offer that again for him this year. If he wants to ride with us, he can do that. So yeah, it's a great time, especially if it's great chamber of commerce weather. Like it was last year. Yeah, it's great to get out. So um, if you want to enter the parade, we have entry uh, forms at the chamber. And so you can come by and do that. Um, and then right before, so the parade starts at one. Um, but before that they have the stampede, which is a five, run walk 5k run walk oh wow you can participate in so um if you're a runner or a walker and you want to do that i mean you could do that get, you know yeah. and then stay for the stay parade for the parade yeah definitely so you know we always want to support the go texan parade and um we're happy to do that but yeah i mean we have probably about half of the entries in so far so um that means the other half will be coming <laughs> yeah you know people wait to the last minute that's okay i, I had a uh uh, conversation with the with the Go Texan committee uh, yesterday or the day before, and they're like, oh, "That's it." I'm like, "Oh, don't worry. They always come in at the yeah, last minute." But yeah. uh, we definitely want to make sure we get the word out about that. So check our uh, social media and stuff, and we would love to see everybody out there. It's the fifty third annual Go Texan Parade. It kicks off the Livestock Show and Rodeo. So this is a huge tradition for our community. Yeah. I mean, when you've been doing something for fifty three oh years, right? That just speaks volumes yeah. about its staying power, yeah. its impact. Mm -hmm. How many young people have been helped as a result right. of the scholarships from yes. this? I mean, yeah. this is this is a big part of what cool. we do. Yeah. And I think the radio station's been in it before. Are y'all doing right. it again? Did y'all put y'all? Oh, putting them on the spot. Yeah. We're trying to figure out uh, if we can broadcast from the truck. Oh, that Ooh. would be awesome. Yeah. We didn't have the FM signal up and running. Yeah. That's time, true. So this is something a oh, little different. Oh, that'd be great. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out the uh, technical side, if that's okay. Yeah. It's going to take me, you know, this weekend. And oh, then. no, that's okay. So, that would be a think, mobile remote. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be, <laughs> I think we're working with other DJs to really get in the studio and pump it up because it happens right in front of the, of uh, course, yeah, of right, the window yeah, here. Yeah, it does. So yeah. it's a lot of fun that would for be the really DJs cool. to be here. Yeah, but Exactly. We also want to be on the truck and yeah. talking. That'd be really so. cool. Love that. <laughs> that is a yeah, neat idea. That is really cool. Yep. yep. Look forward to that. You bet. So, yeah, we have a kind of a busy uh, February. And um, then, I mean, I know, so, well, I don't know. A lot of people know because they haven't really been putting it out there. But we moved Taste Fest to the first part of June. Yes, we did. I'm kind of excited about I that. I too. I think it would be a great way to kick off the summer. But um, we're already starting to plan for Taste Fest. So, um, like, we need to get Connor a coffee there and... Mm, this is really um, good coffee. If you have a restaurant or a catering business or anything that deals with, with food or beverage, you need to participate. Yeah, absolutely. It's our largest attended chamber event. I heard that we had like 1,400 people there last we year. We did. Or something in we that did. Number. Yeah, We did. I want to make like around 2,000 this year. I That's my a great goal. idea. It's great. It's Tickets are $15. And you, get <laughs> all, a, I'm talking about, you get all you eat and you get two adult beverages. Yeah. Where can you go out to eat for 
fifteen dollars for two drinks. No, you can't. No, you can't. you can't even go to lunch at lunchtime or breakfast for that kind of. Well, you can get it for that price, but you won't get the beverages. Right. Yeah, and it's great food. It is. So we're really excited about yeah. Taste Fest. You'll start to hear a lot more about that coming up, but um, but I know our committee is going to be out there um, soliciting uh, restaurants and caterers and everything. So. Yeah, this is a really good opportunity to showcase. Yeah. Your restaurant. Oh, yeah. If you, you know, your beverages, mm-hmm. whatever. And yeah. there, there are a lot of new establishments there are. here in town. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. And if you don't and you want to participate, you can be a sponsor and have a booth there, too. So you're going to get in front of a large audience of people as well, too. So yeah. I would say, well, I don't have, you know, I don't have food. I'm like, you can still do it. You bet. Yeah. So Why definitely not? do it. Yeah. So we have a bunch of other stuff coming up. Um, I think that's it for right now. I mean, I know we'll go over our calendar events. When we get back, we're going to take a short break. And we will be back with Chamber Chat in a few minutes. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app for your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That is Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stuff podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. Hey, and we're back at Chamber Chat. I'm Brian Bondi, president of the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. And I am Courtney Galley, the director of special events at the Chamber. And we are joined this morning by a special guest all the way from South Carolina, Tim Norwood is with BCN Management, and the Chamber and BCN have just recently entered into a, in a partnership, a strategic partnership, I might add, to assist member businesses in understanding the uh, tax credits that they may be eligible for as a result of Hurricane Harvey. Good morning, Tim. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Everything going okay in your world? Yes, sir. We got hey, blue skies and about 55 degrees. It couldn't be any better for a February 2nd. Sounds like a Chamber of Commerce Day in Florence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, give us a little background on, on, on BCN and how you all came to be uh, authorities in, in helping companies identify these credits. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm delighted to tell you about how we got started in the business. Back in, actually, my college roommate, Jim Brown, uh, went to work for a gentleman named Adrian Shelley, Shelley's Management Service, uh, in 1978. And Jimmy and I have always been, remained friends. We were in each other's wedding and um, children growing up together. And in 1995, um, Jimmy approached me and said, listen, I need somebody to come help. Uh, I've got to control of the business now. Purchase Mr. Shelley out. He and, a, and another partner, Frank Chisholm. BCN stands for Brown Chisholm Norwood. Got and it. so we went to. Um, uh, he said, "Won't you come work with me?" And I said, "I don't know, Jimmy." He, was, uh, he said, "He convinced me to come to work with him." He <laughs> said, "You could earn your way into uh, uh, ownership." And I said, "Okay." So we, um, we we started up with SMS, and we built that from. And SMS managed. The work opportunity tax credit primarily, along with other other state incentives from across the country. We were a national company, and we built that business from about 15 employees when we started together um, to, in seven years, about 250 employees. And along the wow. way, we became the largest provider of the ta- of WOTC tax incentives or tax incentives in the country. Awesome. Um, that's we were larger than like E and Y, larger than. You know, PwC. You know, we just we we had it. It was incredible what we the companies we had. Walmart was obviously our largest. Federal Express, UPS, AutoZone, public supermarkets, um, Randalls, uh, which was part of the um, uh, 
I think Kroger changed because Kroger, Kroger was a client. Safeway mm-hmm. Food Stores, which I may be Tom Thumb there. Um, so, yeah, we, we built a big business. So we got really experienced. And, and then we sold our business to ADP, stayed there for 13 years. And then when our non-compete ran out, uh, we started BCN. So we have uh, just a, uh, our, in our senior management team, we have over 125 years of experience in managing and, and obtaining federal and state tax incentives. And the hurricane credit, retention credit, is exactly that. We, the first time the hurricane credit came up was in 2005 with um, Hurricane Katrina. Right. And we managed that program uh, for, it usually takes about two years to process. It's hurricane credits are usually a one-time only credit. Okay. But, uh, mm. but that's, what, that's, that's our experience. Okay. And did you work with businesses in uh, in Louisiana and other parts of the Gulf Coast after that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, we worked with those, those three, the, the Mississippi, <laughs> Louisiana. Yes, sir. We worked with all those uh, businesses there. Uh, all up through Baton Rouge, Sheik's Report. It was, um, and of course, that, that set the, the, the bar for when major catastrophes happen for the, for the federal government to come in and help those businesses and individuals. Because, you know, this is a, this, these are some crazy statistics that in the first year after a major hurricane, 40% of the businesses failed. Wow. Within oh that my first gosh. year. Wow. That's a big it's, number. Yeah. It is. And it's going to get bigger. And then within the 25% of those businesses fail within the first year. And then in two years, about 90% of the businesses fail after a national disaster. They, go, they just have so much. You know, that's what Kevin Brady last week when, when he was at, uh, at the chamber breakfast. He, he alluded to the fact that they need to do a little more to fix it. They don't need to just give them credits. These credits come. These credits go against your income tax. So you have to pay income taxes to utilize the credit. Right. But what Kevin Brady wanted to do is do a grant, so you don't have to go borrow money and make your mm. debt larger. Right. And um, so, uh, but so anyway, that's it, it, it's it's a, the, the businesses are really in a tough spot, and anything that the federal government can do to help them, that's what we're here to to, to fill that void. Because most of them, Brian, don't know about them. Well, that was actually going to be my next question is, you know, this is something that um, unless you're paying attention to um, the news or just, you know, you're tuned into it through your bookkeeper or your CPA, most people are going to be like, I I don't know what you're talking about. So, I mean, was your experience with with Katrina the, the same thing? And, I mean, how do you how do you educate people about their availability of this? Yeah, the um, what we found um, both in Katrina and Sandy um, is that this small businesses, now small businesses like under a thousand employees, really don't have exposure to this, right? The, the, to the uh, to this opportunity. Now, if it's a large business like like a Walmart or a Walgreens or CVS or um, you know large manufacturers, whatever that were affected. Yeah, they know about it because they have, they have consultants like like I was. You know, that's what that we did it right. for them, and like the Ian Wise and the and the Delo- uh, Deloitte and Touches and the those guys, uh, Equifax, go, go go work with those guys and tell them about it. But that news doesn't get filtered down to smaller employers. Good point. Um, because honestly, they're so busy, they just making uh, making the business go. They don't have time to research this stuff. So we believe a fully ninety percent of the of the people that could be eligible for this in, in the Houston area, Conroe area, don't know about it. And, and then they're turned off in their mind. We say the federal government opportunity, first thing they think of is red tape, and gosh, it's got to be too hard to do. Yeah. Yep, yeah. that's exactly. I that. Yeah. yeah. So explain exactly what you guys do and how you'll be helping uh, our member businesses uh, if if they're interested to uh, to identify these tax credits. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, Brian. What what we do is, you know, the, the, the act, just so just to be perfectly, so anybody who wants to go look up anything, right. is, is Congress passed, passed the, the act H.R. 3823, and, of course, it's got a good government name, 
the, the, the Disaster Relief and Airport and Runway Extension Act. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> so that might scare everybody off, right? There. Yeah. But, what an interesting combination. <laughs> <laughs> so it, anyway, it did a lot of things, you know, uh, besides what we're talking about. But obviously, but there's a section in there called Section 503. That's the retention credit. Okay. And so, what we do is, and and we want to make this because we understand that. Everybody can take a kind of a jaundiced eye, so jaundiced look at anything. You say, "Gosh, I'm from the I got a federal government program here, and it's going to help you." And you're from South Carolina, and you know, tell me, I don't understand this. And so they're taking a jaundiced look at it. So the way we set this program up, one, you know, <clears throat> the chamber, the Conroe Chamber of Commerce has vetted us. You, right. You, you mm-hmm. I've checked our references. Yep. You know, you, you know who we know. You, you've done everything to make it make sure that we're who we said we are. Um, but it, it's going to be. Um, we don't want to get any, to get any money from anybody up front. Um, I, everything we do is going to be based on a contingency fee, and so we and we only get that after we've done the work and given and given the business, and we understand they can use the credit. Um, we give the business a package that they prepare, that we prepared, and they can give this through their accountant to obtain the credit. Um, and so the first step is for us to just have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Just to, uh, first of all, this is what's this is what's cool. Every business in Montgomery County is um, eligible for this for this opportunity. Every business, and that's Whether because they were of what? For, because it, uh, the the disaster zone, if you live in a, the number one criteria is if you live, your business is located in a disaster area as designated by FEMA, then that everybody, that every business in that county is, is eligible for this credit. Okay. You might not be able to, to take it, but you're eligible for it. Sure. And so that's what we do. All right. We, when, the first thing we do is somebody's interested in being eligible or confirming their eligibility, and if they have a credit they can utilize, they call us, and we have a, a complimentary evaluation with them about what the opportunity may be. We have to find out about how many employees they have, where their employees live. They're just really basic, just a conversation. And then from that conversation, it will say, well, it looks like you might could get $10,000, or you might could get, you know, because one employee is a $2,400 credit. Of course, 10 employees is 24,000, 100 is 240,000. So it doesn't take long to get into some real numbers. Can you explain so, can you explain how how it works because you're throwing numbers around but I am just I'm mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out how, how do we how does a, a business know that they may have eligible employees? Does it have something to do with yeah. losses or 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 what? It's, it's called in auto. With the way the credit works, it's forty percent of the first six thousand dollars in wages. Okay. And that's for any employee that works there, whether it's an owner that's getting paid a salary, or a general manager, or whether it's a dock worker, or a truck driver, or a, a retail store clerk. And is that just during uh, the time it, of the hurricane? It is. It, it goes from the date of the hurricane through January first, twenty eighteen. And wow. the, the reason, yeah. Yeah, yeah you would think it would just be during during that week or, or, you know, that the hurricane happened. But yeah. it goes through and the first part yeah, of this year. it goes all the way. And exactly. And it, it's because of the, one of the terms that, that we use or that, that Congress uses is um, inoperability. Mm. So say, let's say you had a, um, uh, your business was closed for two days. Because mm-hmm. just you, you couldn't get to work, uh, it was flooded, whatever. It's it not even flooded. It was just couldn't get nobody to get to work. Right. Uh, it didn't have power, whatever it may be. And then you, you say, all right, we're open day three. We got to work, and all your workers, employees, they their homes are flooded. You know, they've got to take care of their business, so they make it only work a half a day, or may not even work for another three or four days, or. You, your, your deliveries that you need to have at your store so you can sell that product, the delivery truck driver couldn't get to work and he couldn't deliver the truck. 
So the inoperability, you know, this is designed to get to provide you a credit for one, retaining employees, and two, ensuring that you get back to um, 90% of your operability prior to the hurricane. So you, everybody thinks, oh, I was closed two days. You know, that's not be much credit. Right. But if you look at the inoperability and every fact and circumstance for each business is different because we, we check their, you know, the amount of payroll they're paying. We, we look at how much, um, uh, how many employees were impacted personally where they, where they could get to work or not. Um, we look at uh, year-over-year sales. Um, we, several operational issues that we compare year-over-year, month-over-month week over week, whatever it may be, and that op- inoperability actually can stretch. There, there was a golden corral. This is a Katrina story. There was a golden corral in, in Katrina that they went three months before they could get. Now, they were open like day three, but they were using generators. They were using, um, a, uh, they had to rent refrigerator trucks, and but the, all that is extra expense. And but they had they had a lot of volume coming in because they were the only place open, but they still were not up to capacity. Mm. And so when they got all that corrected, then they were at ninety percent, and then that credit, their accumulation of credit stopped. So that took them, you know, months to be able to get in that position, that position where they were actually back at work, working when there was no. Um, no inhib- inhibitors for them to run their business. Wow. So uh, we're uh, we're starting to get short on time. So talk about the um, our arrangement here in Conroe and how businesses might be able to try and find out if if they are eligible for these tax credits. Um, simple thing would be um, call 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 myself or or a staff member here. And we'll um, do the complimentary evaluation and ask a few questions. Um, my number is 843-519-0803. Email us, tnorwood at bcnmgt.com, and then um, we'll do the complimentary evaluation, and then um, from there we'll sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, right. share um, payroll information with us. We match that payroll information, check where that goes, and then we'll uh, have another conversation based on the information we, we learn for that payroll about the operational uh, differences that may have transpired. And that may stretch that one-day closing to a week's closing or to two weeks. Sure. And uh, so it, it, it could be very beneficial, very lucrative for um, for members of the chamber, non-members of the chamber, what we'll do if we work with them and they are not a member of the chamber. As part of our, our arrangement, we will um, pay their, one, their first year of um, chamber dues. Fantastic. Yeah. So the other option is, if you're listening and, and you, you, we've piqued your curiosity, you can mm-hmm. also reach out to the, the chamber, give us your name and a phone number and an email address. We'll pass it along to Tim and his team mm-hmm. and uh, and make sure that we uh, we can connect you all together. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a phenomenal program for, for businesses in mm-hmm. our area. Um, and we look forward to uh, to partnering and, and having this become a, a successful venture for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Tim. We're thanks very much. We appreciate you. Yes, thanks, Tim, for Thank calling in and being on the show, and we appreciate it. And like Brian said, if you have any questions, just contact us at the chamber, and we can help you get connected with Tim. And we'll be back All with right. wrapping up Chamber Chat in a few minutes. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. 
A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. And welcome back to Chamber Chat on Lone Star Community Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Courtney Galley, the Director of Special Events at the Chamber. And I'm one of your other hosts, Brian Bondi, President of the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. We're just talking about our busy calendar that we have in February. Yeah. I want to hit some other um, update uh, events that we have coming on um, for our members. Um, so the day after tomorrow, so the 7th, we have Glenn Shepard, How to Supervise People and Lead a Team. So um, I want to kind of get into the, um, to the kind of what that's going to be. Um, and it, the, um, the kind of the tagline, um, you know, How to Supervise People and Lead a Team. Hire with confidence. Fire without fear. Tame toxic employees and put your team on the fast track to recording shattering success. Sounds really interesting. I tell you, we've had uh, we've had Glenn here before. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, he is a, uh, a best-selling author. Um, he's written six books. Uh, number one, one of his books went to number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah. Um, he puts on phenomenal programs. Yep. This is a full day program. It runs from nine to three thirty mm-hmm. on uh, on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We still have some space available. Yep. It's a uh, hundred ninety seven dollars for yep. chamber members, two forty seven for not cha- yet chamber members, yep. and it's it. You walk out of there with usable information. Yeah. Well, I like that. Buy three, get four free. Yeah. Exactly. Why not? I mean, yeah. that's that's, that's the best part. Yeah. If you've got lots of uh, supervisors. You yeah. really need to be sending some people Definitely. to this tomorrow. And it won't be at the chamber. It'll be nope. at the top of the tower. That's so right. City Hall. Yep. The Conroe Tower. So, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a, It's a really strong program. Yeah. He has about, uh, I want to say, eight or nine different modules that mm-hmm. make up the, the program. Yeah. And um, we've, we've, as I said, we've had him before. And uh, without question, people walk out of there with tidbits and things yeah. that they immediately put to use. Yeah. Definitely. This is a good one. Yeah, it definitely is. So if you're, um, like uh, Brian said, we still have some spots available. So um, if you're interested in attending, just go to Conroe.org and click on our calendar and find the 7th and go ahead and register for that. Um, wow. And then the next day we have Morty Mingle. And it just keeps getting better it and does. better. Mor- um, morning Mingle is one of my, I mean, like after hours is fun. I just really like morning mingle. And I'm not a morning person, so that should tell you something. Well, there's a lot of energy there. People yes. are there to meet other people. Yeah. I mean, it really, it does very, very well. Yeah, and we do it at Conroe's Incredible Pizza Company. Yum. And I always, I, you know, I always say when we talk about, you know, morning meal, and they're like, oh, at the pizza company, I'm like, you don't understand. This food is good. It, I mean, they go all out for us. He does do a really good breakfast pizza. Yeah. Yes. But the scrambled but, eggs, the potatoes, the yeah. bacon, the sausage, yeah. the pancake, yeah. the fruit. The cinnamon rolls. The cinnamon rolls. And then that little contraption thing I always talk about with the blueberries and the cream cheese. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so good. A little contraption. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. I'm glad when he has it out. And it's $10. That's a no-brainer. I mean, that's great. Yeah. Where can you eat a solid breakfast for yeah. 10 bucks? And network with... Your chamber members are 75 yeah. or 80 other people. Yeah. And, and I mean, you literally meet 75 yeah. or 80 other yeah. people, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a great So definitely come out for that. So we have, you know, the forums today, Glenn Shepard's the next day, and then um, morning mingle. And then um, going into later in the month, we'll have fun after five on the 15th. Wow. This is going to be a good one. I like it when it's at the home. So it's going to be at the Woodlands Development Pine Island Showcase Home. These are my favorites. Wood Forest. Yes. Oh, what did I say? Woodlands. Oh. Oh, I sure did. Sorry about that. It's one of our friends at, at uh, Wood Forest and Grand Central Park. They, you know, they all run together. <laughs> I Not feel in like their eyes. Do. I know, I know, but I feel like they all do. So, um, so but, Pine yeah. Island, isn't that their luxury home area? Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that'll be good. Like I said, I always love these. Um, I think these always get a great turnout. And yeah. I mean, even if you're not looking to move or anything like that, these are always great just to see what's out there. The decorating ideas yeah. are amazing. Yeah. Yes, sorry. I, I do see it here. Wood Forest Development. $2 million showcase home. Oh, my. This is in, I'm reading it in our FYI. So, if you don't have the FYI, pull it out and see it. So, um, and it's complimentary. Uh, but we want to know if you're coming, so please RSVP. There's fun and food, beverages, door prizes. If you're coming, bring a door prize. It's a great way to market your company um, and go out there and mix and mingle with people. Um, you know, it's kind of like your children. You don't want to pick a favorite. So now I feel bad that I said I liked Morning Mingle. Yeah, because I tell you, you know, uh, last month in January, we were at Mr. Reuter where we did a, a a joint after hours with our friends at the Woodlands Area yes. Chamber of Commerce. About 225 fun. people there. Yeah, that I mean, was It was really wall-to-wall -wall bodies. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. They did the plunger pool. The plunger pool. That's so good. I still remember years ago when I went, when I um, didn't work at the chamber and I was eligible to, <laughs> to to be in those, and I still have my plunger. That was probably like three or four years ago. So, the, yeah. The plungers never go out of they style. Don't. It works. It works <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Thank you for that plunger, Mr. Reuter. That's right. Um, but, yeah, and then we have, you know, a couple other um, Chamber University um, seminars going on throughout the month. And, um, yeah, I mean, just busy. Again, another busy month. So um, another thing I know, I was talking to uh, Beth, our new membership director, yesterday. And um, she was saying, you know, make, make sure we mention about our diplomat program. So I know they're really working to revamp that they have they are they had a meeting uh, the day before yesterday so but um yeah if you're interested in being a diplomat and being part of that uh program at the chamber you should definitely do it yeah it's called diplomat dollars and it's a, a yes. way for them to earn uh opportunity yeah. to spend it on anything chamber i'm pretty excited about that yeah it'll be really really fun um and i'm just again looking through the fyi for um other stuff that's coming up and again you know we talked about january being a busy month but uh february is too and um you know, if, if you're listening and you want to be on our radio show, too, it's complimentary with your membership. What a deal. Right. Come I mean, on. Talk and about I, your business. Right. And people are always like, oh, I don't know. We don't prepare questions. I mean, we basically, it's chamber chat. So we just sit here and chat. We chat. We don't come up with questions before. It's just, it's really relaxed, laid back. It's a great way to get your, um, again, market cost-effective marketing opportunities. Right? Oh, but the chamber didn't do anything for me. <laughs> Well, there we go. There you go. Yeah, Give I mean, us a you call. Could, you could at least gotten all the radio show, right? Give us a call. Oh, yeah. That's all it takes. We're looking for, for great guests to come on. So just, you know, uh, business as usual with the chamber. One of the things I want to give a shout out to, Courtney, I, and I know we talked a little bit in the first segment about Chairman's Gala, but our, mm -hmm. our, our business award winners. Oh, yes. Our small businesses. Yes. We had actually had two small we businesses did. that we recognized. We did. And one of them you know, was Mr. Reuter. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was appropriate that we talked about them after their uh, their after hours, and yep. they do a lot in the community. Natalie and Roger, and um, mm -hmm. not just here, but in in South County, and they go out west. I mean, they're they're really all over the place. And and then the the other small business was uh, Vernon's Country Catfish, and you know, yep. after seeing what they went through after yep. the hurricane and yep. and everything, uh, it is so nice to see them back and operational. Yep. And they're such an Important family they for are. Conroe, and they help us with the lobster oh fest. Oh my gosh! So yes. it's it it, yeah. it was a very appropriate. Yeah. And then our large business mm -hmm. was Buckaloo Chevrolet. Yes. And talk about another business that's been a, oh my a gosh, yeah. hallmark of this organization right. over the years. Yeah. Um, just it was it was very heartfelt yep. to see them yeah. get recognized. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize that we started started um, um, asking people to nominate um, a small and large business of the year, and then. Um, have that award at our um, Chairman's Award Scala. Yeah, it was really, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so we, we look forward to doing that again um, next year. So, um, and kind of pulling, like talking about the hurricane, um, <clears throat> we have a guest coming up at our next segment. We're talking with uh, Tim Norwood with BC in Management. Yeah, we'll look forward to, to visiting with Tim and learning about uh, Hurricane Harvey tax credits. Yeah, so he'll be talking about what that is and um, how, um, as a member of the chamber, you can benefit from that. Very, It's going to be very interesting information. Yeah, so you'll want to stay tuned after yeah. the next break to uh, listen to Tim. Definitely. So, um, <clears throat> again, um, if you want to attend any of our events, you can go to our website at conroe.org and register for them or find out um, what uh, what you would like to be attending. I know, again, we have a lot, but we have uh, you know just great stuff uh, coming up this month. 
um, or call us at the chamber at 936-756-6644 or stop by. We would love to see you. Um, and again, a full calendar of events that we're having in February. And up next, we'll be talking with Tim Norwood with BCN Management. So stay tuned on Chamber Chat. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Just contact the station on IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. And good morning. We are back. I'm Brian Bondi, president of the Conroe Lake Conroe Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Courtney Galley. I'm the director of special events at the Chamber. And you're listening to Chamber Chat. Wasn't that an interesting segment? It was. It really is. Um, I was surprised a lot about the numbers. And what really surprised me was um, the duration that you can, because it's up to the end of January. That's right. And I thought it would just be like that week of the hurricane. Yeah, and that's that's yeah. what makes it kind of confusing for people and why a lot of times they just they ignore it because they right. think it's too complicated. Right. It's not. It's not. No. I mean, definitely like, I mean, I would think just just call Tim and just talk about it and see if it, you know, I mean, what's the harm of, of investigating it to see if it, it works for you? It, it truly is no obligation. Yeah. yeah. If And if there's nothing there, fine. Yeah. And if there's something there and you still don't right. want to pursue it, that's yeah. fine also. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing is that there are businesses, whether it's retail, restaurants, um, yeah. that their employees couldn't get here, right. um, even though they may have been open, right. uh, that all has to be uh, explored. Yeah. Manufacturers, same thing. They have suppliers that couldn't get in. Right. Same thing. Right. I mean, it, it, it all kind yeah. of works together. I definitely think it, it affected it affected more than you think. It did. Yeah. It really sure. did. So a yeah. um, couple of ways. we uh, Tim gave his contact information. We'll mm-hmm. have that information at yeah. the chamber. Yeah. So uh, just for real quick, if, if you want to call us, 936-756-6644, we can provide yes. Tim's contact information. Definitely. You know, it, once again, it, it doesn't hurt to, to look into it. And, and see if you're eligible yeah. for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then I just want to um, kind of t- piggyback on uh, the first um, first part of our, our segment um, when we're talking about our um, our events. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention we're having Google at the Chamber. Marketing. Yes. So on the 21st um, for our Chamber University program, we're having Google Presents Grow Your Business Online. Um, wow. It's a half-day marketing seminar. It starts at 8 at the Chamber. Um, this came to us through one of our board members. She recommended it. And, um, we're going to do a couple more throughout the year with the Google, but, um, but this is just going to be a great opportunity for our members. And it's free. Yes. Yes. Because if it's free, it's for me. That's right. Yeah. So if you're looking to, um, uh, to sign up for that, do it immediately, um, uh, because we're, I think at the point where it might be standing room only. Yeah. So, um, cause we have capacity in our boardroom, but, um, yeah, you definitely, you definitely want to do that. So. Um, and that's on the 21st? It's on the 21st, yep. So, I mean, it'll be here before we know it because January is gone. So That's true. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, But, yeah, I mean, again, you know, we just talked about all the stuff we have coming up in February. And, um, you know, thank you for Tim for being on our show. And, um, yeah, just, you know, we're just trekking along. Yeah, um, you know, right at the end of January, we uh, we helped uh, open grand open the brand new Kroger Marketplace. Oh yes, over at Loop three thirty six and I forty five South um, at the in the new three thirty six Marketplace yep. at Grand Central Park. Mm-hmm. Our good Kroger friend Mike Medved is the store manager there, and we wish him and his yes. team a lot of success in that new location. Yeah great friend of the chamber and um, we are also continuing with the chamber's next generation leadership Mm -hmm. which is our partnership with education for tomorrow alliance we've got uh, 39 high school seniors from all over montgomery county that are continuing to learn about their community and we'll do that again in february march april and then in may we'll 
wrap it up for yeah. another year. Graduation for hard, them. Hard to imagine. Yeah, I know. Just crazy. So um, if you want to find out about any of our things that are going on at the Chamber, uh, again, our website is conroe.org. We're located at 505 West Davis. Come in. We love to see uh, people come into the Chamber. Call us at 936-756-6644. Visit our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our Twitter page. I mean, if you can't get connected with the Chamber, I don't know what you're doing. Well, because we're out there. Apparently, you're not getting connected. That's right. And you know what our tagline is. Get, get connected, connected. Stay, stay connected. connected. It's all That's about the connectivity. Right. It is. <laughs> Boy, we've had it drilled into our head. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to us on Chamber Chat. And um, we'll be back next month for another arousing chat. Thanks very much. Thank Have a great you. week. Bye-bye. Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcast, Channel 12, Our City TV, and Conroe, or Channel 21 KVQT in Houston, and of course their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.